Okay, so now we're going to be taking a look at factoring complex trinomials. So you'll notice here, um, this is obviously a quadratic, right? The degree of this is 2, it's a quadratic. But unlike simple trinomials, the leading coefficient here is not a 1. And because the leading coefficient is not a 1, we can factor that. We cannot factor that. And because the leading coefficient is not a 1, we cannot factor it using product sum. If you haven't seen the video on factoring simple trinomials, I'll link it in the top right-hand corner. But our focus today is factoring complex trinomials, i.e. that leading coefficient is not a 1. And notice here I can't factor the 2 out. Had this been an 8 instead of a 7, I could factor the 2 out, and uh, then we'd be left with a simple trinomial. This is not the case here. So how do you factor using this method called decomposition? To factor using decomposition, you're still going to calculate your product in sum. But this time, your product is, is going to be the product of your A value and your C value. So in this case here, it's going to be 2 times 6, which is 12. And your sum is still your B value, which is 7. So now you have to think of two numbers that multiply to be 12 and add to be 7. Those are 4 and 3. Once you find those two numbers, what you do is you take your quadratic, and we're going to replace the 7x with a 4x plus 3x. Now, every time you do that, what you end up getting here is these first two terms and these next two terms are always going to have a GCF. And the GCF of my first two terms is 2x, leaving me with x plus 2. And the GCF of my second two terms is a 3, leaving me with an x plus 2. Keep in mind, when you're factoring something out of an expression, it's, it's division. So 2x squared divided by 2x is x. 4x divided by 2x is 2. Likewise, 3x divided by 3 is x, and 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now, when you go through this process, we now have a common factor. And this will happen every time you're doing decomposition. So when I go to factor this here, I now have a common factor. So I'm going to factor that out of both terms, leaving me with 2x plus 3. And now our quadratic is fully factored. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at some more examples, and it'll become much more clear. Okay, let's look at this quadratic here. Again, leading coefficient is not a 1, and I can't factor that 4 out. It's not common in all three coefficients, so I have what's called a complex trinomial. We have to factor this using decomposition. So um, there's two terms I have to find. What is the product and the sum? Well, the product is the multiplication of my a and c values. Notice here you always take the sign in front, so I didn't forget to grab that negative 10. And the sum is your b value, which is 3. So now I have to think of two numbers that multiply to be negative 40 and add to be negative 3. And those two numbers are 8 and negative 5. So now what we're going to do here is I'm going to replace that 3m with an 8m minus 5m. And then I'm going to put that negative 10 back down. Again, we're going to use the method of factor by grouping. And with factor by grouping, we're going to look for a GCF here. What is, it, what is the GCF of the first two terms? Well, the GCF of the first two terms is 4m, leaving me with an m plus 2. And now, this is important uh, to note here, the GCF here is 5, but you should always factor a minus n out when you can. So in this case here, I'm going to factor that a minus 5 out. And when I factor a minus 5 out, I get an m plus 2. And now with that m plus 2 here, you'll notice again we have a common factor in both terms. So I'm going to factor that actually out of the expression here, and I'm left with m plus 2, and then I'll be have a 4m minus 5 left over. Now keep in mind, we've discussed this before, the order doesn't matter. I could easily write this as 4m minus 5 times m plus 2. Multiplication is a commutative operation. Uh, it can be interchanged. Okay, here is example 2. So again, example 3. Now with example 3, is something important to notice here. I can't factor out the 16, but I can GCF out a 2 out of this expression. Although it doesn't give me a simple trinomial, I can still use this to my advantage because it makes the question easier to solve. So I can GCF out a 2 here, leaving me with an 8r squared minus 6r minus 5. Now what I have here is I have a, still have a complex trinomial in the brackets, but it's easier to work with. So when I'm solving this here, my product here is going to, going to be 8 times negative 5 is negative 40. My sum here is going to be negative 6. I need to think of two numbers that multiply to be negative 40 and add to be uh, negative 6. 
So going through those combinations here, I'm getting what, negative six, or negative 10, and, oops, sorry, negative 10 and four, right? You'll notice negative 10 times four is negative 40, and negative 10 plus four is negative six. So now what I'm going to do here is that two, you just write back down, you're not bothering with that two right now, and then you're gonna go through your normal process. So I'm gonna replace the negative six R with negative 10 R, plus 4r, and then put that minus 5 back down. Likewise, I'm going to uh, GCF out these first two terms. If I GCF out these first two terms, I'm left with 2r, and I'll have a 4r minus 5 in the brackets. These next two terms here, there's actually nothing to GCF out. So what the only thing you can factor out really is a 1, and leave me with a 4r minus 5 in the brackets. So now you'll notice here, again, I have that common term of 4r minus 5. So I put my 2 down, and then I'm going to factor out that 4r minus 5, leaving me with a 2r plus 1, and then kind of writing this, omitting that outside set of brackets because you really don't need it, we end up having our quadratic in fully factored form. 2 times 4r minus 5 times 2r plus 1. All right, let's take a look here at example four. So same idea here. Um, there's no GCF on this. This is a complex trinomial. I can't make this simple. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate my product and my sum. My product is going to be two times two, which is four. My sum is going to be five. I need to think of two numbers that multiply to be four and add to be five. That's four and one. Okay, so what do I do with this here? Well, I'm going to replace the 5D with a 4D plus D and put that plus two down. Again, using factor by grouping, I can factor out a 2D, leaving me with D plus 2. There's nothing I can factor out of this one, so I'm just going to factor out a plus 1. And again, we have a common factor of D plus 2. So that's going to come out of the expression, leave me with a 2D plus 1. And now we're fully factored. Okay, let's take a look at example 5. So same idea here, no GCF. You always should look, though. You should always look to see whether there is a GCF. There isn't in this case. But now let's go ahead and calculate my product and sum. So my product is going to be a times c. So in this case here, you get negative 30. My sum is going to be 1. So I need to think of two numbers that multiply to be 30 and add to be 1. That's going to be 6 and negative 5. So now what I can do is I can get rid of that b and change it to a 6b minus 5b minus 3. I'm going to GCF out here a 2b leave me with 5b plus 3. And likewise here, I'm just going to factor out a minus sign. You should always factor out a minus sign if you can. And that'll leave me with a common factor of 5b plus 3 in both terms. So I'm going to factor that out. And what am I left with? Well, I'm dividing this out here. And I've discussed this before. When I, I'm taking this expression and dividing by 5b plus 3, the only thing I'm going to be left with here is a 2b. Then I'm taking this expression and dividing by a 5b plus 3. The only thing I'll be left with here is a minus 1. And now we are fully factored. Okay, that completes uh, introduction to decomposition. Uh, review these concepts here, take a look at them. But this is the general outline for decomposition. There is a second method uh, to factoring. It's called charting. And there's some situations where charting is uh, easier to do. And uh, again, I'll link a video, you can check it out, and we can kind of discuss the method of charting and sort of when you use decomposition and when you should use charting. All right, thank you.